The solutions architect role is not an easy one. It's also not a role you can easily define. Go ahead and ask 10 people what being an SA means, and you may get 10 different answers. And you know what? Their answers might all be correct. For all intended purposes, various organizations see solution architecture from various perspectives, depending on their business needs. Now, here's one of the best definitions I have found on what solution architecture means. Solution architecture is defining and foreseeing multiple aspects of a business solution from both strategic and transactional perspective. Strategic means that a solution architect defines a long-term vision for a software application to ensure it stays relevant regardless of future changes. And transactional means an application should handle the current customer workload and address daily business challenges without any issues. For example, if the user demands increase 10 times, then an application should be able to scale and accommodate user demands without significant changes to the architecture. Similarly, if new technology such as machine learning or blockchain get introduced to solve a specific problem, your architecture should be able to accommodate them, for example, using AI to build a recommendation system on top of an existing data for an e-commerce application. This is a great definition because it encapsulates the fact that solution architecture is not a purely technical role, and it's not a business or product role either. It's actually a mix of those, but also it's more. And this definition comes straight from a book I've been reading recently called Solutions Architects Handbook by Sorab Srivastava and Yelanjali Srivastav. And please forgive me if I didn't pronounce these names correctly. Sorab is a global solutions architect leader at AWS and Milan Jali is a senior product manager at AWS. So these guys, they know what they're talking about. You know, I've been asked on multiple occasions in the channel about books I recommend. And I also asked you guys and girls if you'd be interested if I reviewed some of cloud career books. And the response was overwhelmingly positive. So when Pact reached out to me about the second edition of the book, I welcomed the idea. And I spent the last three weeks going through the book, chapter by chapter, line by line, diagram by diagram, because yes, the book offers various cloud native design patterns and their implementations. And I know you guys love that. Now, although this is a sponsored video, all opinions are mine, and Pacts didn't have any say in the contents of this review. So now, without further ado, let me tell you why I agreed to review this book on the channel and why I think it's a must for every person aspiring to become a solutions architect. The Solutions Architect Handbook starts by describing the holistic approach of solution architecture and its position within the enterprise ecosystem. And it does a pretty good job at it, I might say. You see, solution architecture is not just about providing a software solution. A good SA addresses the most common aspects around software in an organization, including, but not limited to compliance requirements, for example. You know, your solution serves users in Europe? Well, you need to account for GDPR. Does your solution deal with health records? It needs to be HIPAA compliant. There is the California Act. There is the, uh, the FISC for Japan, IRAP for Australia, MLPS Level 3 for China. But we're not done yet because compliance requirements are different between industries as well. We will not go there for now. You know, we'll just say that designing a compliant application is a big part of solution architecture. There's also cost and budgets. There's also business requirements. There are IT infrastructure, technology selection, because developers will be expecting you to be knowledgeable and recommend the right technology for implementing the solution that needs to be, again, distributed, needs to work across time zones, needs to handle traffic spikes, needs to be secure, and all that good stuff. But sometimes it is more beneficial for the company to buy the solution it needs rather than to build it. And by the way, I am working on a buy versus build episode where I share my method of weighing the pros and cons of buying a third party solution. So make sure to subscribe for that. There's also solution maintenance, right? Now that the solution is developed and launched, you need as an SA to take care of the post-launch activities, such as solution scalability, disaster recovery, operational excellence, monitoring. That also might be a subject of a whole different episode. So 
I hope you understand my excitement in finally finding a book that addresses all these aspects in details and in a practical way. You see, one of the goals of this channel is to help aspiring essays navigate their career goals. So I was pleased to notice that the authors of the book dedicated a whole chapter, you know, just to describe different types of roles for solutions architects. Whether it's generalist or a specialist architect, they talked extensively about the evolution of the role of an architect and the intricacies of this role in the cloud. Speaking about the cloud, this book really is beginners friendly. It takes, for example, time to explain the three models of the cloud, right? Public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud and all the differences between them. And then the authors slowly introduce the responsibilities that fall under the umbrella of an essay one by one with practical and simple illustrations. Yeah, and you can see some of those illustrations in the screen behind me. We know, for example, that business requirements are at the center of any solution design. So the book explains the importance of non-functional requirements and shares different methods on how to approach them. We also know that one of the most fun parts of being an essay ever is creating prototypes. Because an essay needs to develop a POC, not always, but if you can do it, that's amazing. You need to develop a proof of concept in various technology stacks to analyze their fit for the functional and the non-functional requirements of the solution. And for this as well, the book provides a simple and a practical approach to find that balance of designing solutions for the current requirements with an openness that makes it super easy to add a new requirement in the future. But it's really in the middle that this book shines. It is when it starts explaining concepts like high availability and resiliency and, and fault tolerance and redundancy, just to say a few, with diagrams using real services and using concrete examples. Let me read for you an excerpt from page 85. For your architecture, resiliency can be achieved by monitoring the workload and taking proactive actions, as shown in figure 3.4. The load balancer will be monitoring the health of instances, if any instance stops receiving the request, the load balancer can take out the bad instances from the server fleet and tell autoscaling to spin up a new server as a replacement. The other proactive approach is to monitor the health of all instances, such as CPU and memory utilization, and spinning up new instances as soon as a working instance starts to reach a threshold limit, such as by ensuring CPU utilization is higher than 70% or that memory utilization is more than 80%. That's a bit of knowledge that you can put to use right now, right away. And this tradition of providing practical examples with illustrations to explain all these software engineering and architecture concepts continues throughout the book. We learn, for example, about scaling workloads. We learn about using replaceable resources, thinking loose coupling, you know, when, when your services are not tightly coupled, when you can change one interface, place one component with another, and everything keeps working. We learn about thinking service, not server. We learn about data-driven design, security everywhere, and a ton of other good stuff. After the book covers all these concepts we talked about, it dedicates a few chapters to cloud migration patterns. Those of us looking to take their current workloads and move them to the cloud, we learn in these chapters about some of the available patterns, the lift and shift ones, the rehost, replatform, and relocate. And for those of us in a quest to learn about cloud native approaches, then there is the refactor and repurchase. By the way, let me know in the comments if you want me to dedicate a video about how to choose the right cloud strategy. I'm interested to see if this is something interesting for you. Back to the book, you'll find a step-by-step -step cloud migration plan from discovering your workloads and analyzing the information to designing the application, validating it, and maybe starting the optimization process once it's all good. Another thing I know you guys appreciate is the serverless patterns playlist. And you've been asking me to cover more design patterns in the channel. That's how I know it. You see, I listen to you. So now it's time you listen to me and hit that like button.
Thank you very much. So this book is a gold mine when it comes to solution architecture design patterns. The authors really knocked it out of the park with this one. They provide architecture designs and reference architectures for a ton of use cases. I particularly liked the multi-tenant SaaS based architecture on page 118, the SOAP web service architecture with code examples on page 121, the e-commerce website architecture on page 125, the real-time voting reference architecture on page 129, and those are just some of the few ones. Now, I got the digital version of the book put on my computer, as you can see, to use it as a reference for all solution architecture purposes on a daily basis. And this book is by no mean a high overview kind of book. It is 440 pages packed with useful and practical information for inspiring solution architects, but also for experienced ones. And I wanted to share it with you guys so badly that I asked Pact, the publisher, for a discount, and they agreed to give my viewers 25% discount with the code 25 Ilias. And I will make sure to put the link in the description with the discount code. So where'd you go from here? Check out this top five cloud careers for 2022 video with salary included, or this one where I cover the right certificates you need to get for a career in the cloud. Thank you all. See you next time. Peace out.